amazing gift. So I'm trying to remove a nice, even, and uh, clean layer here, all this flesh and fat right off the side, and um, just to get everything else nice and smooth and clean um, and ready for soaking, for bucking. Or Once I get the center done and all the middle is nice and clean, then I work on the edges. So I pull it up a little higher and then just work to clean out all the last little bits from the fringe. Once you get all the fat and all the flesh off your hide, you want to be extra careful too. You don't want to leave any bits of fat on there. Um, if you do, you could get kind of a grease burn and it could stain your hide. Um, it'll show up later on. So once all of that underlayer is nice and clean, the next step is to put our hide uh, into the water and to let it ret or partly rot for a while till the hair starts to slip. Let me take our water. We pull the water on the skin. You want to make sure the hide is completely submerged. So get it totally covered and wet. And then you're going to want to put a weight on there to hold it down like so. So that way as much of the hide will be under the water as possible. And you're going to want to come back periodically and stir it and make sure um, it doesn't fold or so you get an even um, exposure to the moisture and the bacteria. Oh yeah. <laughs> Welcome everybody. And so glad you could be here to hang out with us and all the black flies and the beautiful breeze today. So we're going to continue the buckskin process here. Uh, we've demonstrated how to buck the hide using bacterial activity, namely through the retting process or a controlled rot of the hide to raise the grain and eliminate the hair. In this case, as you saw, up in this northern climate here in northern New York, uh, it could take a few weeks to do that. So, to expedite the process today, we're going to use potassium hydroxide flakes or live flakes. And what that is going to do in about four days or so, it's going to raise the grain and make it much easier to take off. So, you can save a lot of time and energy um, by using this stuff. You do want to be very careful when you use it, though. Uh, you don't want to breathe in the dust. Uh, it's very irritating. Uh, to my nose even just measuring it inside so if you are measuring it do it on a day like today when it's nice and windy um, and also the vapors once you get the hide and everything in solution you don't want to open that up and take a big whiff you want to kind of off gas it before you get too close okay also you don't want to have wet hands and work in spaces where this dust might be some good friends of mine have experienced burns from it um, by doing that very thing so be careful as you work uh, with these materials. Also, you may want to use gloves uh, to protect your skin. Um, you know, your cuticles, bacteria, and other things can penetrate there. So, uh, just as a safety precaution, you may want to take those measures. And what we're going to do is basically we're going to make a solution here with the lye. Always add the lye to the water. Another safety note um, never add the water to the lye, uh, just like you'd never boil. Poil. <laughs> Just like you'd never pour uh, <laughs> water into boiling oil. Uh, it's the same thing with the lye. You don't want to create that super quick uh, chemical reaction. Uh, you want it to be a little more tempered. So always add the flakes to the water. In this case, we're going to use warm water to make the process go even smoother. And the warmer your temperatures are, the faster the process will go. 
So what we're going to do is basically mix up 15 gallons of solution today. So that means three quarters of a cup of lye. So if you do 20 gallons, you could do three hides and that would be one cup. Um, in this case, we'll get about two hides that will suspend at different times in the solution um, to make it go a little further. And thanks again for joining us. If you guys have any questions about any of these steps, please feel free to contact me at livingwiththeancients at gmail.com and reach out um, about your experiences. I always have more to learn. So, away we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're making our lye solution. When you warm the water, you want to make sure that you can stick your hands in the water and not burn your fingers. Uh, that way you know you won't be cooking the hide with overly hot water. But the warmer it is, the faster the process will go and the easier it will be to dissolve the lye. So we have this nice warm water from the bathtub. And then we're going to get the lye and you want to get a stir stick uh, to mix it up and then we'll add the hide. Hide soup. Hope you're hungry. <laughs> so right now I'm steering the lye flakes into the water. They will dissolve much faster this way. So here we have our buckskin. We're going to add it to our lye solution and make our nice hide soup. We're gonna press it down under the water and we wanna weight it down um, because of all that hollow hair, the hide wants to float. Um, that's why it's very easy for deer to swim because they're basically wearing a life preserver. So we'll submerge it um, with a nice weight. You can use logs or rocks or in this case, Shane found a beautiful uh, hubcap, works perfect. Hide soup, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Oh yeah, that is. Yeah. Good morning, campers. Well, the next step in making our buckskin is to remove the hair, the hypo, and hypodermis. That would be the hypo, would be the membrane layer, and the hypodermis we call the grain layer. That's the layer in between the hair and the actual dermis, uh, which is what we want to save. So, what we're going to do is we're going to methodically remove all of that stuff, and then um, she'll be ready for the next phase. Nice, this grain is coming off really easy, smooth, so glad. <clears throat> this hide was soaked in the, just the cool water for I think just about three weeks. And <coughs> just changing the water periodically to keep it relatively fresh. But basically we want the hide to partly rot, so we'll let the hair go and that the grain will raise and also be easy to take off. So you can see in here, there's the grain, that, air, that membrane there just underneath the, the hair where the hair connects. So you want to just follow that down. Make sure you get every bit of it because any place you don't get that grain off, it's going to be harder for the <clears throat> harder for the the lubricants there, the egg or the brains, the fat liquoring in this case, all those fatty acid chains to penetrate into the dermis. So you want to get all the grain off that you possibly can. As you come to the sides here, towards the underbelly, you want to be careful because the skin is thinner, so you can cut it, even though this is really dull, um, you can kind of can cut right through it. So you have to be careful there um, to avoid that. Though if it does happen, don't be discouraged. Just be careful. Do the best you can. 
Yeah, there's something really old and beautiful about transforming <clears throat> a hide into something wearable. And when it's done, that buckskin is so soft, it feels as though it was supposed to be put next to our skin. It's always here in the neck area, the upper regions, that it tends to hold the hair a little longer. So I may actually put this back in the water, let it go a few more days before I can remove that easily. We'll see. So at this point, we got most of the grain off um, and most of the hair. There's still some areas that are holding the hair a little bit. Uh, so I'm just to make it a little easier, I'm gonna let it soak in the water for another couple days and then by then it should come off a bit easier. Um, also, probably if I wanted to expedite that process, I could always put it in warm water um, and it wouldn't take as long to get that bacterial action going. All right, those little wee beasties are doing a lot of the work for us. Um, so I'm very thankful to those little invisible critters for helping me uh, flesh and, well in this case, <clears throat> dehair, grain, and demembrane this hide. We all work together. <laughs> All right, we've gotten all the hair and the grain off. That would be the hyperdermis, the above layer. Then the center we could call the dermis, and now we gotta remove the hypodermis, or the underlayer, which is this membrane is called. Um, and that's this layer of connective tissue that attaches the dermis to the animal. So once we get all that cleaned up, then it'll be ready for the fat liquoring process and the softening process. So this is our next step. We wanna get it nice and clean as we can and um, then you know we can ensure that the outcome is uh, as good as possible. So, here we go. What we're doing to soften this hide is a fat liquoring process. So you can use egg yolks or you can use brains, anything that has an abundance of fatty acid chains to bind to the collagen and lubricate it is ultimately what you need. So in this case, you wanna actually separate the egg yolk from the white and you can make lemon meringue pie or in Shane's case, you could feed it to the raccoons, okay? Either way, everybody's happy. <laughs> So one easy way to do that is just crack your egg and then you can catch the white and just change the yolk back and forth until all you have is the yolk and the white here for the coons. One dozen eggs is said to do one hide, but you know, to have extra doesn't hurt it one bit. Also they say the animal's brain is enough to tan its own hide. 
Um, so what you want to do is when you're making your solution do not add too much water. So make sure you have just enough water to cover the top of your hide um, and submerge it. Then what you can do is also keep that solution warm. You know, just warmer than body temperature to allow those fatty acid chains to penetrate as deeply as you can into the hide um, while you're doing the ringing process, which we'll be doing here shortly. So this is the fat liquoring or dressing of the hide, and next we'll be wringing it out and putting it back into solution to ensure that those fatty acid chains penetrate throughout the entire uh, dermis. Oh yeah, baby. So, again, you can crack your egg and just toss that yolk back and forth and allow the white just to slip off wonderfully into your bowl. So we want to make sure this hide gets nice and fat liquored up. So we're going to be putting it in and out of this egg solution um, at least four times. Okay. And you may even want to do more for a bigger, thicker hide. <clears throat> you want to make sure that that egg solution is nice and warm too to allow that deeper and uh, more rapid penetration into the dermis. So what we do is basically stretch the hide on and we're going to make a little donut. So we're going to wrap the top or the bottom like so and make sure the, um, the grain side is out so you can squeeze that water right out and through. Then the top is going to come over like so and then we're going to roll the ends in. So that way, when we put some torque on it, it should hold pretty nice. Also, you want to make sure that you have your bucket right underneath to catch all of that good brain or egg soup. It's also nice to have your beam up above your head so you can use your body weight while wringing it out. This also can be fun if you have a couple of people working together. Also, you gotta watch out for it squirting <laughs> as it likes to do. All in all, you wanna repeat this four times. And the very last one, do a most thorough ringing to ensure that when you stretch it and rack it, the moisture is the least. And in between wringing it out and dipping it back in the egg solution, you can stretch it or cable it to help straighten it out, open up the fibers and allow a nice penetration of the eggs or brains. Oh yeah. <laughs> the louder you grunt, <laughs> the more dramatic it is. Definitely takes <coughs> a good bit of elbow grease. So you give it a good ring, let it drip out, and then flip it around and give it another good squeeze. There we go. So downward pressure as well as that twist oh, is going to help get more water out. Oh, 
Also, when you're doing the final ringing, you can get a towel in there to get excess moisture. Help dry it out even more. This hide has been dressed and rung and dressed and rung now. This is the fifth time. So I'm going an extra round just for good measure. And it'll be ready for racking and stretching very soon. You can also allow the stick to lock onto the pole and just let it sit and drip. Just watch out though for it to let loose. <laughs> I've definitely been whacked in the face before. <laughs> it's almost ready now. I want to try to make it as homogeneously moist as possible. And today there's quite a breeze, so we're going to bring it into the shade to rack it so it doesn't dry out too fast. Okay. Closer and closer. There, so she's pretty much ready to rack. Before we rack it, we're gonna hand stretch it and we're gonna stretch it over a little stake that my friend Shane made, built by the power of Shane. And we're gonna cut <clears throat> little slits in it, parallel to the edge of the skin, um, every six inches apart, and then weave the rope through um, onto the frame. Oh yeah. Mm, smells like dermis. <laughs> what we've just finished doing is wringing out all the water and we're keeping it in this bucket to keep it out of the sun and this wonderful breeze that we have to ensure that it dries slowly and evenly. To prepare it for the rack, we're going to stretch it over a cable and over this fine stretching stake that Shane has built, built by the power of Shane with lots of love and good intent. So we'll get the edges and the basic stretching um, as much and evenly as we can on this hide before we put it on the rack and um, cut the holes to stretch it. So one thing at a time. I'm going to start just stretching it out by hand in the shade so that it doesn't get too dry too quick. You want to stretch it from all different angles. You want to stretch it across horizontally as well as lengthwise and diagonally to ensure you get an even pull in all directions. So once you get it loosely open with your hands, then you can hit the edges with the stake. And that's where these come in super handy. And as you go, you want to make sure you get the entire perimeter of the hide so you can make sure that each bit has been as evenly stretched as possible. So we've got the edges and most of it relatively stretched here. Now we're going to bring it over to the cable um, and then we'll put it on the rack. So we've tied a bit of cable here to the pole that uh, Shane will hang a deer from hopefully later this fall. And we're going to use that to stretch this a little bit more before we put it on the rack. You 
want to go head to toe, top to bottom, vice versa, side to side, and diagonally both ways. And get the entire fringe of the hide. It's amazing how, by the end of this, how many different ways <laughs> You've worked every square millimeter of this beautiful bit of skin. No wonder it's so soft in the end. <laughs> you can soften a hide this way just by cabling and stretching over your back or a chair or throwing someone up in the air, whatever it may be. You don't have to rack it. But the rack does provide a lot of benefits. One, you don't have to do this constantly for four hours or however long it takes, sometimes many more, sometimes twice as long. It's a big skin and it's a cold, wet day. So you save yourself quite a few calories by racking it up. The first hides I did, I did this way, but when I found the rack, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I think that's nice. Very nice. Makes it a lot easier. But this is a good preliminary to the rack. Okay, so to prepare it for the rack, what we're going to do is we're going to poke holes with a knife running parallel to the edge, about six inches apart. And it's easiest if you can lay it on the ground and just punch through, or maybe a board. So if you don't want to put your knife in the dirt, you can put a hardwood board underneath it or something. Or if you have a knife that it uh, doesn't matter if you get into the sand a bit, um, that can be very useful for this process. So we're ready to rack it now. We have it pre-stretched and we have our holes cut parallel to the edge of the skin, about six inches apart. So we're gonna put it on loosely um, with as long a string as we can, just to try to get it centered. Once we get it centered, then we'll tweak it and stretch it out as evenly as possible before we start leaning into it with the sticks. Here we go. <laughs> At this point, we definitely can't stop moving it until it's totally dry, at which point then it will be a nice white soft buckskin. You could use it for a wedding dress perhaps, but don't get it wet because it'll get nice and hard, okay? So this is the final step before smoking, um, which is the very last step um, of making the buckskin. And then after that, you get to uh, stitch it into something beautiful or dye it or whatever it is that you wish. So, here we go. Can't stop moving now, so let's boogie. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> So we have the tension pretty much evenly distributed across the hide and relatively centered. So now what we're going to do is um, start laying into it with our softening tools uh, to start opening it up as she dries. We want to be careful of any holes, okay, we don't want to encourage those um, if we can. So be very gentle and aware um, as you go and apply a nice bit of elbow grease uh, to the softening process. So in the process of softening, we have a few tools at our disposal. In this case, because of the breeze and the sun today, it's getting a little dried, dried a little bit faster than I'd like. So I have a little mist bottle 
that I'm gonna use to mist the hide any, and just spread that moisture out any place it's getting too stiff before I can get it soft. So that way I can ensure that evenly it's stretched out. We also have a few pumice stones. One's pretty rough, the other one's more fine. And that we're gonna use to scrape off the extra bits of membrane and grain or whatever that um, comes up in the process to ensure the smoothest, softest buckskin. Also, we have our wonderful uh, stretching stick here that's gonna do a lot of the work. So you can see the tip is kind of like you know a gentle but flat kind of point um, to just slowly work into this beautiful skin so as you work you want to work up to down you want to get into the edges and you want to evenly start to just stretch out the hide as much as possible in all directions after we do it this way, we're gonna turn it, flip it the other direction, so then we have the other side out, stretch it that way, and all of the above. We'll keep turning it and stretching it and turning it and stretching it and getting it softer and softer. So first, I'm just gonna give it a little splash of the water in any spots that stiffened up in this breeze, and uh, then we're gonna get to it. So as you proceed in softening the hide, what you're gonna do is adjust these ropes and the tension on them. So every so often when you see they're getting pretty loose, go back, tighten the whole thing, and then continue to soften, retighten, soften, and so on, and slowly open the hide. Just be careful that you don't put too much tension on it because you don't wanna rip through the skin. Firm but gentle pressure is the key. All right, so we spent many an hour working our buckskin. It is now wonderfully soft and supple. It, oh, it's just a pleasure to hold against my skin. And in order to preserve the softness, what we need to do is smoke the hide, and that is the actual final step in the tanning. So in order to smoke it, we have to create a container to catch the smoke in. So we're gonna create a hide bag here. And if you have one skin, what you can do is just fold it in half, and glue, staple, or stitch the outer seam so that you have a really good seal. You want to also um, glue or staple or stitch any bullet holes or holes that you may have acquired. And then it's ready to be attached to a skirt and ultimately suspended over the smoldering pithy punky wood. If you have more than one hide, and I've actually uh, glued three hides together before, um, you can glue them together to make the bag and then attach a bigger skirt to them. So, you just want to make sure that you get a really good seal so that the formaldehyde and the other preservatives in the smoke can bind to the collagen. Um, what, happen is, what happens is the formaldehyde will bind to the collagen and then create a uh, space in between the fibers so that way when they get wet they won't be squashed back together and then glue themselves back together. So it'll be like a starchy fabric after it's wet and with a little bit of wear or movement, it'll soften right up. So away we go. So there's different ways to make your hide bag. You can stitch it together, which is highly effective and takes many hours, which I have done. Um, or you can glue it 
um, and stick it together with some clothespins till it's dry, which is also highly effective and takes a lot less time. So if you have glue and clothespins, I definitely recommend um, this method. And it's funny when you start sticking two different hides together that are so misshapen, somehow they always manage to fit um, just right. And if they are um, off, you know, length or whatever, uh, at the bottom, you can adjust your skirt and the shape of that to make it all um, come out in the wash, or in the smoke in this case, before the wash. <laughs> As you know, no two animals or hides are exactly the same. So what you want to do in the process of making your bag is try to find a seam that is the most agreeable to both pieces of dermis. And as you go, just stick it together. And if you find you have an odd piece like this here sticking out, don't worry about it because this is going to be cut off anyways. Um, or for instance, over here as we get lined up um, and maybe there's some extra, then what we can do is just make kind of a, like a little dimple or a bulge here in this case um, in our bag and just glue that together. As long as the whole bag itself is sealed, it doesn't matter how it looks <laughs> or how it's shaped. All right, so here we go. As long as you get a good seal, that's okay. And like these extra bits here like this, um, these are going to be trimmed off anyways in the end, so it doesn't matter if they fall outside of the bag. You just want to make sure that the soft stuff that you want to keep is all contained within that seam. Here we go. All right, so at this point, I've run out of clothespins, and what I'm gonna do is wait for the rest of it to dry, and then I'll take the clothespins off, check for any areas that haven't fully sealed, and then double glue those, um, clip them again, and then I'll take those clothespins and I'll finish off this uh, run all the way to the bottom, um, which should finish our hide bag. So now we just wait a little bit for the glue to dry and then we finish it up in a moment. <laughs> so when your hide bag is all hung up and ready to go, you're gonna actually put some sticks on the inside, make sure they're dry, and that will help to prop the hide open. So basically you put it in there and you smoke for a while, and then to ensure that every bit of the skin comes in contact with the smoke, what you'll do is then take that and you're just gonna move it a little bit um, so that you can make sure that there's no little white spot that might turn hard later. So you just want to make sure there's no folds in the skin. Um, like here, if that was folded over, you know, you want to pop that open with a little stick um, to ensure that it gets full penetration. And you'll know when the hide is smoked well enough when the dark smoke color starts to come through the outside of it. So we've made it to the very final step in making our box skin, the smoking process. So in order to do that, you make the hide bag, which we just did, then you have to attach some kind of skirt to it so that it's not too close to our fire. In this case, the fire is in the form of coals and we put pithy punky wood on the top to ensure that it doesn't catch fire very quickly or reignite into a flame. Um, it's very easy to catch your box skin on fire at this 
you know juncture and all that work can go out the door very quickly <laughs> especially if you dig a hole in the ground and you don't clear all the debris around um, I almost ruined a hide doing that recently so you have to be extra careful about it not igniting into flame and <clears throat> making sure that you have a good seal in your hide bag the bottom edges is probably where most of it's leaking out here but there is enough penetration up through so what you have to do is to smoke the hide and ensure a, a thorough smoking is you want to smoke the grain side first so you smoke the hair side of the skin and you can actually just smoke that and if it's sufficient it will stay nice and supple so in this case I am smoking both sides just for extra good measure and that way uh, we can ensure that it will be soft no matter what hey guys you want to come be in the video <laughs> Yeah. We have our wonderful buckskin here, smoked to perfection. It's a beautiful color, rich and brown on the outside and the inside. Depending on the smoke, or excuse me, the wood that you use, it may change the color slightly. Um, you might get a real nice, rich color from cherry, I found. I get a nice dark color from cherry, but maybe lighter from other woods. And each skin is going to have its own kind of character as well. But we're sure that it's well smoked um, all the way through. So now we can take off her skirt. And oh my gosh, this is the magic moment. <laughs> so here we have our buckskin bag, well smoked. And you can see the difference between, you know, the places where it was smoked and where it wasn't. Like here, for instance, see how dark that is, but how light this spot is right there. So it's going to be pretty darn good uh, for sure. And then what we do is we take our beautiful bag and tear it open. It's like getting a present. Oh my goodness, look at this, baby. <laughs> how excited. Boom, oh my goodness. So we have two beautiful buckskins here. Oh my God, I'm just oh, so enamored with this beautiful, beautiful fabric. It's so strong and durable. Um, it's quite incredible and it's so soft. It's like, yes, please put that close to my skin. So <laughs> that is the process of making buckskin. And now, you know, the world is your oyster. Um, you can make anything with this fabric, a bag, clothing, all kinds of stuff. I'd use the softer fawn pelts for the underwear and the stiffer hides, you know, the thick old buckskins uh, for moccasins or something that you'd want to be more durable. But this is just the beginning of now having this beautiful, beautiful fabric to make all kinds of amazing things. So stay tuned for that. We're going to make a quiver. Um, and some other goodies here coming up pretty soon. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, there's a lot to this process and I have never reached perfection with any of this. I feel I always have more to learn. So please feel free to you know, talk about your experiences or any other comments or ideas that you have. Um, please let me know. I always want to learn more. Um, and I hope uh, that you found it very informative and uh, it encourages you to go out and explore working with this perfectly wonderful natural uh, fabric. And the cool thing about this is that there will be no plastic left in the ocean after this hide goes back to the soil. That will be just fertilizer for the trees and for the future generations garden. And that's what I love about these skills is that there's virtually no waste it all just gets recycled and the water is clean. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you had fun. hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. And please subscribe, like, do all those good things. Share this with the world. All right, stay tuned. Peace.
I know. So when you practice, don't practice near things that could be damaged. Okay. Okay. So we have the skirt attached. That's we got our coals in here because it yeah. it's, sits like a skirt underneath the hide. So then we're gonna take our pithy punky the wood. Hide is dancing. Wait, look See at this it. stuff. It's dancing. And we're gonna crush it up and we're gonna put it on top. It's yeah, it's really hot. It smokes a lot. Terrible. It's gonna smoke a lot. And that's good. We want it to smoke, but we don't want it to do what? Catch fire. So we have to be really careful because it could catch fire pretty easily. We just want the smoke. We just want the smoke. 